Our second press conference of the day features number four overall seed Wisconsin. With a record of 24 and 6, the Badgers defeated Illinois State and UCLA to advance to the regionals here in Madison. Wisconsin is coached by Kelly Sheffield. He's joined by Molly Haggerty, Tiffany Clark, and Dana Redke. Congratulations, ladies, and Coach Sheffield. Coach, if you'd start us off with an opening statement, then we'll take questions from the crowd. We're just, we're just so excited to still be playing. It's, um, uh, you know, and you've got, uh, you've got great opportunities in, in front of you, and, and uh, you know, it's a, it's a sport that these guys just love. You know, they, they love to play. You live for these kinds of, of matches. You train uh, all year long for, uh, to be able to, to do this kind of stuff, and, and to be able to do it here at, at home is uh, – it's cool and it's it's special and and uh, you know it's uh, this will be a long day I'm sure for him and uh, but we'll be uh, we'll be ready to go and and put our best foot forward uh, tomorrow afternoon. So what stands out to you the most when you first look at film of Texas A and M? Is it is it Holland Hands and if it isn't, what is it? <laughs> Have you seen film of her? <laughs> she stands out you know she's she's talented she's um you know and this this team is i mean they're this is a really really a late team I mean, you know they're defensively they hold teams to low hitting percentages you know i think uh holland uh her serve is is just it's sick and nasty and uh team you know our team's gonna have to grind away and and know that the time she's probably gonna get hers and and uh um you know and uh that's probably okay at times, you know, you, you can't give up big massive runs, but she's going to get a point here or there. And uh, offensively, she's awfully good. Uh, they run a zero tempo quick, and uh, that'll, you know, if setters along the net, that will uh, that will make things a little bit challenging. Uh, the setter is is it's got to be the most offensive, certainly one of the most offensive setters in, in the country. And so that, you know, your your defense is is uh is stressed a little bit from from that so and then they they uh, hands gets a, a lot of a uh, lot of attention because she but they're really actually really balanced in in serve receive i mean the, they're very comfortable going going anywhere and so um uh, it's a well coached team they play with uh with a lot of energy a lot of emotion they've got a They've got an aircraft carrier on their team and, and a lot of people that, uh, that know their roles and do it very, very, very well. Uh, you guys had some convincing runs against UCLA on Saturday. Is there a difference, and maybe this is for Tiffany um, and anybody else who wants to chime in, is there a difference between a run, the way a run feels in December from the way it feels in October or September? Yeah, I mean, um, in December, all the teams are pretty good. Uh, UCLA was a really good team. Um, and I think that those runs felt different the, than the way they do in the season because um, you know you're playing against a really, really talented team. Um, and just the feeling that you have the opportunity to end someone's season, um, just doing stuff like that and being aggressive. And yeah, I think UCLA was a really good serving team. And we're happy that we sided out a lot, had those runs. Um, I think that's a large part and part to our offense. So yeah. Yeah, I think especially right now, uh, the rallies are getting longer. And I mean, like she said, teams are fighting for their lives. So it's becoming a lot more emotional. It's becoming a lot more emotional. Um, so yeah, I think just having every point, and it really is crucial one point at a time, and I think the runs have gotten a lot longer throughout the season. Uh, another one for Molly. How do you guys just stay mentally tough when you're in a game? Maybe, you know, the other team goes on a little bit of a run. How do you guys just make sure that you, you know, stay, stay there mentally? Yeah, I think the Big Ten does a great job of uh, setting us up for that. Um, we talk a lot about being in the present and just living in the moment, and we do a good job of just coming in the huddle, whether we win the point or lose the point, and looking at each other in the eyes and just know that we're all with each other. And no matter what, if the motions are getting high, we're staying pretty consistent and knowing that we have each other's backs. Yeah, Kelly, uh, the system where you sub in uh, players in the back row, uh, 
what what's allowed you to do that and uh, why is that the best option for you guys? Uh, <clears throat> You know, unfortunately, the NCA only gives us 15 subs, or I'd have a whole lot more people coming in there at, at, at times. I think there's, um, you know, most of them are, are, are backcourt players, and there, uh, there's there's talent. You know, one one of the things with, with us that, uh, you know, it, Izzy serve and and her defense is is awfully good, and you know, Emmy comes in, Lauren Barnes co comes in, both of those guys are. Are awfully good, but uh, the people that they sub in for, you know, it's Molly and, and Grace and, and Madison. All three of those have years of experience of playing in the backcourt as well and and playing around and and so when we get in the situations where we're running a little bit tight on on subs, um, it doesn't stress us out as much as it does with some other people. I mean, uh, uh, you know. Molly would rather be in their six rotations, and she's been doing that her entire career. And, um, uh, and so, but we've got some we've got some talent and uh, really high level talent uh, defensive specialists. And uh, you know, every day in practice, they're 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 proving that they should be in there. What what part of your success this season is because of those DSs that come in? It's 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 massive, you know. I, I think uh, I think our backcourt players, anchored by uh, by Tiffany over here, is is the it's not just the most underrated part of our team. It actually might be the best part uh, of our of our team. It's uh, uh, our uh, our offensive per numbers are are pretty high, and that's all started with the first touch. You know, first touch, uh, serve, receive, or first first touch defensively, and and um, you know there are there are kids in the trenches, and uh, um, they they don't get uh, uh, the certainly everybody within our team appreciates how talented and how tough and how. Um, uh, you, you know, and how resilient they are. You know, Tiffany's a great example. She get aced three times at, at Ohio State and has been aced, I think, once since then. Well, that Ohio State match was, what, a month ago or so? I mean, that's that's a lot of balls uh, without, uh, uh, you know, going against some gnarly servers that the balls drop and they move and they're dancing or miscommunication. The, none of that stuff has is, is, is eaten her up. And so... Um, you know that's a large, massive part of our success is our is our people in the backcourt. Um, Molly, this one's for you. Uh, at the game on Saturday during the intermission, some women are sitting behind me. They're season ticket holders, um, and they're they were talking about. This is just, I think, an, an example of an aspect of the game that people just don't understand, even if they watch a lot of games. They were wondering what goes through your mind, like what are you looking for, and what thoughts are going through your mind between that first touch and, you know, putting your hand on the ball, uh, you know, attempting a kill. What actually are, is going on up there? Yeah. In the That's past. That's a dangerous question right there. I'm just <laughs> yeah. That, I'll keep this PG. I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, when I was, when I just started volleyball, all I liked to do was hit the ball as hard as I could. And I've learned once I've got to college, that what I can't do because obviously the teams will block me. So I've tried to put myself as a defender on the other side and where I would be if I was defending myself. And so I think putting in a lot of off speed has helped my game just because I know as a defender, I feel like I'm giving the other team a hint, but I'm not the best at defending a tip and roll when I'm off blocker. So I try to throw that in and just kind of, like I said, picture myself as a defender. Well, you're gonna have to get better now know, because gonna everybody's say, gonna be doing it. People are gonna start now. tipping and rolling on me now. <laughs> but are you ready for it? I'm ready now. <laughs> um, Dana, you guys have played obviously in, in this building. You do all the time. What does it mean to you to be able to put sort of th this crowd and and this building and your volleyball environment on this stage at this point in the season? Yeah, I mean, being able to be a top four seed and hosting at home has helped us not only just. Um, be comfortable where we are, but like we have a great fan base and like people love to watch volleyball at the field house. So, um, I mean, yeah, they're, it's our home court, so we definitely <laughs> want to defend that. And um, it's just, it's, it's exciting for us. We've put a lot of hard work in this building 
Um, so it's going to be awesome to see that pay off. And Kelly, this is maybe zooming out a little bit, but o over the course of your tenure here, how have you seen that this environment here and, and sort of what you have here in this building develop to, to where it's at now? 2013, we averaged 3,512 fans, and uh, uh, we're over 7,000, so we've we've doubled. Um, the people are actually in the seats for most of those matches. We averaged just over 3,000. There were matches that we'd have under 2,000 people in there. And, um, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's not just these guys. It's the it's players that have come before them. And uh, this has always been a, a program that that gets a lot of people in here. You, you sit there and I'm saying 3,500, only 3,500, but that's still, you know, top five in the country in, a, in attendance. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I think what these guys have done is they've, they've energized uh, a fan base with how they play. And... Uh, uh, you know, and and the fans here, those of you guys that aren't that haven't seen too much volleyball from here, you're going to be in for a treat. Uh, we were playing at Iowa a couple weeks ago, and uh, the loudest the field house was all night was a point we didn't win. It was an unbelievable rally, and uh, and we ended up losing the point, and the place was was just bonkers. It was uh, they appreciate great volleyball. Uh, they'll be waiting in line four hours before matches here to to get in, and um, you know. But uh, you're asking how has it changed? It's yeah, we've got a lot more people that are coming in here. Tickets were sold out very very quickly. The uh, um, you know I had a f I we had a neighbor that the other day the fans uh, the match tickets went on it on sale at eight thirty, and she had three computers uh, open and ready to go, and at eight thirty one. It said she couldn't get any tickets. You know that was, you know, a minute later, and uh, uh, you know, and, and I think part of that is certainly the the opponents that we've got coming in. You know that, that we know that they're bringing fan bases, but a large part of it is just the the way these guys play and conduct themselves, and and how they inspire others. What does it say about this program that you guys have made it to the regional round for seven straight seasons? Yeah, it's um, we've got amazing athletes that are committed. You know, it's um, uh, they they want to do big things. They've got big dreams. They work all year for it. It just it doesn't you, you don't get gifts. You know, not not at not at this level, and uh, uh, and they don't assume. That they're just going to to get deep in the in the tournament. They they work for it. They grind, uh, and they love the game. And so when you when you love the game, when you are passionate about the game, when you've got really really big epic goals, uh, you, you know the stuff that you got to do at six o'clock in the morning, the things that you've got to do in, you know in in. February when it's really cold and uh, or in July when you've got other things kind of going on it just doesn't seem as hard as what it is because you're just you're all in it together and you're grinding you're doing things that you love with people that you love uh, yeah I think it's it's you know the teams that I respect in sports are the ones that show consistency over time you know and um, uh, and there's been some consistency with with how we've gone about things, but that's all due to the players. I mean, that's due to to the work that they're putting in and and uh, how committed they are to to the process and to each other. And uh, you know, we're going we're going to try to do this as long as we can with this group because it's a special group that I really enjoy being in the gym with. Dan, I saw you nodding along right there. Was there anything you wanted to add to the effect of the process that you guys have been to been through this year? Yeah. I mean, we've just we put in a lot of hard work together and a lot of hours and our I can honestly say like our team is just like everybody's all in all the time. And I think that's something that really contributes to the success of this program. And we're just we're in the right mind space and I think that's where that really all starts. And yeah, I just I love I love competing with this team. Um, and obviously, you have to play Texas A&M first. Should that happen, it would be you know the third matchup this year against Nebraska. How would how do you feel about that potential? Yeah, I mean we feel great. Um, we're obviously going to put ourselves <laughs> in the best 
play as possible to be ready for that match. And but we have we have one more match to um, to play first, so we're going to focus on that. You just had an entire island of people irritated with that question. You, you do realize, don't you? I have no interest in irritating that fan base at, at all. But it's uh, you, the the one thing that you that I've as I've gotten to know this group really, really well, and I've had some teams in the past that had a tough time of focusing in on what's in front of them and uh, you, your your dreams and maybe your stress, whatever it is, uh, takes your mind in a lot of different places. And uh, this group has been really amazing of uh, being able to be locked in on what's in front of them. Um, it's, uh, the, the, we'll, we'll tackle that, uh, uh, that hairy problem, whatever it is, whoever it is, um, if we're fortunate enough to still be to be still be playing, but uh, these guys aren't going to be suckered into to thinking about something else. You you started to answer my question, I suppose, but what is it? Is it unique to have one team that you're really familiar with that's in in the pool and and is here this weekend, and then one team that you haven't? And as a staff, how do you? Do you think at all, do you do any advance work on those two, or do you just worry about that after Friday? Here's how we – there's no right or wrong way, I think, to scout or whatever. Here, here's what we – I'll give you a little bit of insight behind the curtain here of, of what, we, what we've done is that uh, last week when we played, we, we opened with Illinois State. The very first day of the week, we showed them a few minutes of clips of Notre Dame and a few minutes of clips of UCLA the very first day, so that if we were fortunate enough to make it past the first one, with such a quick turnover in our sport, we've got to play back-to-back -back days. Uh, most other sports, there's a day between. We don't get that advantage in, in, in our sport. And so we showed them a little bit on the very first day of the week, and then we locked in on Illinois State um, uh, for the rest of the week. And then we beat we beat Illinois State. The next morning, we were able to show them a little bit of UCLA, and all of them were like, oh, yeah, I remember watching a little bit of, of this, uh, this attacker and this team. Uh, this week, we did the exact same thing, except we didn't do anything with Nebraska. These guys know Nebraska. There was a little bit of familiarity. So when we watch some film, if we were to see them, there's already some familiarity. So the first day, we showed um, a little bit of Hawaii, the rest of the week has been all Texas A&M. So that's, that's kind of how we've gone about it. Any further questions for Wisconsin? Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.